You may not even realise it, but as you're using your laptop to study, your computer is exchanging and processing information using a binary code of ones and zeros. For example, when you type in skull into KenHub's search bar, your computer uses this cryptic language to receive information from the website. This allows you to read articles, watch videos, study illustrations, and test your knowledge. Your brain works very much like a computer, in that at its most basic level, it too uses a binary code of sorts. It either sends an action potential along a nerve, or it doesn't. And this is what makes us capable of completing everyday functions, like digesting your food, contracting your muscles, and facilitating vision. Yep, our brains are definitely one mega supercomputer, and we could spend days or even years talking about all of its capabilities. But today we're going to start with the basics, as we look at an introduction to the brain. Before delving into the details, let's take a minute to introduce what we'll be learning today. We'll start by taking a general overview of the brain and see how it fits in with the rest of the body. Specifically, the relationship between the central nervous system, or CNS, and its peripheral counterpart will be examined. This will give us a really good idea of how the brain acts like the computer we saw in the beginning. Next, the different functional components of the brain will be examined, starting with the three parts of the brainstem, which control the lowest, most basic bodily functions like breathing and heart rate. Next up, we'll investigate the cerebellum and we'll see how it helps you with your smooth, fine motor movements, like what you would use in the dissection lab. Then we'll ascend, both in position and function, to look at the different parts of the diencephalon. This part of the brain does many things, including acting as a mediator for the nervous system by receiving and processing information, then sending it where it needs to go. Finally, we'll reach the large convoluted mass that constitutes the cerebrum, or the telencephalon. And as we'll see, this is where the most advanced functions take place, like critical thinking and voluntary muscle movements. We'll also see how the cerebrum is organised into two hemispheres, which are each made up of various lobes that have their own unique function, but more on that later. Finally, we'll put on our white coat and look at what we've learned from a clinical perspective. So before getting into the nitty gritty details, let's see where the brain fits in as an integral part of the nervous system. So if you've been surfing our site, then you may already be familiar with this stimulating ins and outs of the nervous system. In which case, you already know that the brain, along with the spinal cord, belongs to the part of the nervous system known as the central nervous system. Here is where you find components that are essential to the functioning of the human body, many of which will be covered in this tutorial. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and Atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.